Every year in our garden, we're always going to be tackling a lot of diseases that can hit our plants. But if you're paying attention and if you're mindful, you're going to be noticing that some of these diseases hit a lot of more different plants, but a lot more frequently than they do some other ones. So in this video, it is all about powdery mildew because that is the one we're going to be talking about. What plants can it affect? What does it look like? And also, how in the world do we treat it, manage it? Because I got to say, this one is not that bad. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to my happy accident. Isn't that really cool? Now this is the topic of the video is squash. And that is a type of family that the powdery mildew really likes to hit. It's a cucurbit family. The cucurbit family is actually a pretty large family of squash plants. Some of them are vining, some of them are not. I believe it involves the cucumbers, the squashes, zucchinis, uh, watermelons, pumpkins, anything with that squash looking like leaf, that is what that powdery mildew is going to hit you with. And it has finally hit here. See, what had happened was, is that I have a neighbor that grew some gourds inside of her backyard. There were gourds, squashes, I'm not even sure if they're ornamental or edible, but we'll get to that later on. So she gave me them and I was supposed to put them in the compost pile, but I never did. And I just kind of left them in the backyard to just kind of rot and do its thing. I know that's laziness and obviously that's not something you're going to do. You're ideally going to put them in the compost pile, but I didn't. So basically in a nutshell, I let that squash, gourd, whatever the heck it is, I just left it there to just kind of rot and decompose right there as it is. But turns out happy accident is this because we never planted this. This actually came from the gourds from last year. So it turns out that my happy accident needed a little bit of maintenance because it was actually doing pretty good. And one of the first things I saw was powdery mildew. And powdery mildew is basically, once again, it haunts a lot of us gardeners, is the fact that it's a fungal infection. Okay, powdery mildew is going to show up and it's going to look like powder. Basically, that's what it looks like. There's a few different types of powdery mildew. There is downy mildew, there is powdery mildew, and I'm sure I'm gonna list some, you know, a few different other ones right over there. But they're all basically fungus infections, fungal infections, and they do spread through spores. So all that powdery stuff that you're gonna see on top of the leaves, those are all the little spore stuff that can easily be just taken by the wind and spread in your garden. And there you go, the more spores, the more fungal infection, the more powdery mildew, and then you have more problems. In order for powdery mildew to show up and thrive inside of your garden, it's got to be a few conditions. One, it's got to be really hot. The second one, it's got to be really humid. Like a humid environment is just like a mold and fungus' dream. It's basically, this is what I'm having. I'm in Pennsylvania and it is extremely, extremely humid. I mean, it is ridiculous. Oh, Freddie! Say hello to Freddie, everybody. Freddie, subscribers. Now that we know a lot about powdery mildew, how in the world can we get rid of it or even just prevent it from happening? So there's like three things that I've seen and I've done over the years to actually combat it because once you get the hang of it, powdery mildew isn't really that bad, at least for me. But it did take me a while to really get the hang of how to do, you know, how to handle powdery mildew. So the first one that you're going to be doing is pruning. You want a lot of airflow flowing through the plant, underneath the plant. One thing that powdery mildew loves is a humid environment. So if you have a bunch of leaves piled up on each other, then it's just going to be capturing and holding on to a lot of that humidity and moisture in between the plant leaves. So you really want to just get rid of it. Chop them all down. You can at least strip at least about one third of the plant leaves from that plant. Assuming this is a healthier or rather healthy plant, then it can you know, survive the amount of leaves being taken off. Just use your discretion as to how many plant leaves you want to be taking off. You're also definitely going to be taking off the ones that are infected already with the spores. And also, you don't want to leave them around in your garden because you're going to be spreading all those fungal spores that are on the plant leaves. Just take those plant leaves and throw them out in the garbage separate away from your garden. The next thing that we're going to be doing is spraying those plants. Now that you've pruned the area, you've pruned the plant down, you got some really good circulation, we're going to be spraying it with some solutions to kind of neutralize that powdery mildew. I have at least about four of them because I've used all four of them. Now all four of them do work. I've just noticed that some of them work a little better than others. But also remember, you're going to be doing this in conjunction with pruning and also paying attention so we can spot the early signs of that, you know, the powdery mildew. All right, Jack, how frequent are you supposed to be spraying this stuff? Well, oof, if it was me and what have I done? I've sprayed at least minimally once a day. But if you notice that you got a really bad infection, even though you have pruned and everything, I would probably do it like twice a day. 
I mean, this is not really that harmful to your plants. We're just neutralizing the mold that's on, you know, the fungus that's on our leaves. So I would, but I would still pay attention. Observe how your plants operate. If you notice that, you know, one spray a day is not enough, consider going to two sprays a day. But we're going to be paying attention for any residual side effects that may happen from spraying too much, let's just say. It never really happened to me, but it could possibly happen. You never know. Now the four solutions, the first one is a copper fungicide. Now you can buy those in concentrate at your, you know, like your big box stores or even on Amazon. I'll drop a link down in the description below for, you know, for one of them that if you want to buy from Amazon. And also, um, those are actually not bad. They're concentrated, so you would have to mix it up in a spray bottle and use it. But um, that's my least favorite. Look how goofy you look. The words. So, I mean, but it is an option because it is a fungicide. I just don't, you know, I'm not a fan of it. Number two in solutions is a baking soda spray. And I find that this actually does work. I'm um, not as great as my other solutions, but this one is an option because I have used it and it really does clean you know, or kind of work. You have to be vigilant and spray with this. Now I'm using a baking soda solution. This is just gonna be water. So you're gonna take one tablespoon of baking soda and then you're gonna dump it in one gallon of water and then you're gonna spray it. I like to add a surfactant, which is basically like a dish soap because I want this solution to stick to the leaves. So you don't have to do that. I mean, I know other people probably don't do that, but this is what I do because I really want this solution to stick on there on the plant leaf so it can kind of neutralize that powdery mildew that's on it. You can use a smaller option like this, but I'm generous with that tablespoon. Okay, I'm not even leveling it off. I'm a, it's a big heap of baking soda. Other people can say otherwise, but that's what I use and that actually works and it's effective. You guys haven't even seen Chip in this video either. Come here, Chip. Mm. Chippy, welcome to the video. He's healing up pretty good, right? Okay, go, get out of here. Another solution which is totally out of the box and random, but I have been experimenting with it all season long, is Jadam Sulfur. You don't have to use Jadam Sulfur. You can use basically any sulfur-based product or sprays that you can use inside of your garden. Sulfur is a great fungicide for a lot of many plants. And you know what? Sulfur is underrated. Okay, that is a really good product to be using inside of our garden. And you know, most of the time, I think, I think it is considered organic as well. So it's a great option. I mean, I'm using Jadam Sulfur because I did make a whole bunch of sulfur batches for my garden. But if you don't want to go that route, you can always just buy some like made mixture ready, you know, solutions that you can spray in your garden because that's a really good option. And that actually does work. This next solution is pretty cool and it involves using milk. And I got to say, this one works a lot. Like I really got the powdery mildew under control using this milk solution. It really does work. So what I did was you're going to be using one part milk to two parts water. So if you're going to be using a gallon, you know, a gallon of, you know, a gallon jug, you're going to be filling that up two thirds of it with water and then one third of it with milk. I also add the surfactant or the dish soap to the solution so I can, you know, kind of help that this solution stick onto the plant a little longer. You don't have to do that. This is just something that I do, but this one really works the best. Notice how, notice with this milk solution that it kind of just, not to got rid of the white powdery, but notice it just kind of is not as intensely white. Isn't that pretty cool? This is why I love the milk solution. Really hope that you found this video informative and that you got some good information out of it. Let me know down in the comments below. How often do you struggle with powdery mildew? Is this your first time messing with it? Or is it one of those pervasive things that you find in your garden, never ending every year? There you have it. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. I'm not gonna go in through the whole spiel, yada, yada, yada. It's like, subscribe. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, all that fun stuff. Don't forget the description below because of a bunch of other links that you may enjoy. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are gonna be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check y'all later in the next episode. Peace and love. Look who I find in my cord field. You're not supposed to be there. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Chop, chop. Out of here.